Dome Sport Talk, worldwide, with some news in the world of boxing, so y'all know what time it is. You ain't in a rush to get concussed. Now, let's go heavyweight, man. Let's talk a little bit of bronze bomber, Deontay Wilder. You got Lewis, the real King Kong Ortiz, man, in about a week, 23rd of November. Y'all know, y'all know that's the fight I don't want to see. That's the fight that I don't think should happen. I think that's what's wrong with boxing, that that fight should happen. I mentioned it in another video I just did, right? Uh, you know, I don't want to go in on that. <clears throat> but just, I don't think this should have happened. I think someone else should have fought Luis Ortiz before Wilder. Wilder has nothing here to gain from this fight except, like I said, blessing uh, Luis Ortiz because they have a bond because Luis Ortiz's uh, daughter is sick. And to give, let him have another heavyweight fight, a championship fight, give him another shot. But I don't think uh, Wilder has anything to gain here at all. Now, I found one scenario, <clears throat> and this could probably give Deontay Wilder a little bit more motivation. Because I know Deontay Wilder, if he come in here trying to uh, uh, dominate Brazil, this dude, he going to mess around and be in another Tyson Fury fight. But the difference is, it's a Tyson Fury with some punch power, right? It's going to be a whole bunch of round seven. I don't think you'd be doing you going in here cocking your, your right hand trying to do this to this this guy. Uh, but uh, I think that Deontay Wilder, though, let me. this is the point, you know, you can't really do better than the first fight. Beating the man, sick. Right? Winning the fight, sick. Being in trouble and getting out of that with the flu. Right? Proving again you have a chin. Right? Because when we talk about people having a chin, it's like people who get rocked and recover and win. That's the people we call having a chin. Wilder's proven that on multiple occasions. And it's been outweighed most of the time. So he's proven that. But here's one thing. Deontay Wilder, you know, if he did lose, right, boom, his next payday is, is big. If he wins, his next payday is big. Either it's Tyson Fury or the undisputed fight against the Andy Ruiz Jr. versus Joshua winner. If he loses to uh, uh, Ortiz, I'm sure he has a rematch clause. You better because you're giving him a volunteer. You're blessing him. If he ain't got a rematch clause, it's the dumbest thing I ever heard. Of course, rematch clause. So if he were to lose, he'd get a lot more money in his next fight. It's the only thing, because it's really hard to motivate. And I'm like, when I look, think of Wilder, he stays highly motivated. You know, it's got to be something. You know, so I, figure, yeah, I don't know what he's, his motivation is. So I'm just saying, it's going to be hard, you know. But when I'm looking at this fight, you know, you guys know I'm fearful of the fight. I have a lot of respect for Lewis DeVille, King Kong, Ortiz. I roll with Wilder. I don't have a problem. Wilder, for you know, guys know how I feel about Deontay Wilder. His life Boxing life is worthy of a movie and a damn good one. I don't even know why they believe we have a movie. He's already done enough. <laughs> this is ridiculous. This is the awesome movie. Don't bust the movies we be going to watch, and we ain't got a Wilder movie just because he's living or just because he's still boxing. But we got movies about the mother dudes. <laughs> I don't get it. But okay, cool. You know, but you know, whatever. But uh, at the end of the day, speaking of movies, there's there's parallels here. To uh, Lennox Lewis versus Rockman. Right? Here's Lennox Lewis versus Rockman. Now, Lennox Lewis, y'all know that's my favorite heavyweight of all time. I think he's the GOAT. You know, I got Lennox Lewis against anybody, any era, any size, anywhere, whatever. Two out of three, Lennox Lewis. Heavyweights, you can get beat by somebody once. Lennox Lewis against anybody. Yeah, Mike Tyson, definitely. You know, because when it gets to Mike Tyson and and, uh, Lennox Lewis, it's very similar to Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder. That's why when I'm doing you know, people, English people be getting upset if I'm going in. I got Wilder over Joshua all day, right? But my my favorite is Lewis over Tyson all day in his prime, the best years, because then, then he didn't want to mess with him. And I keep bringing up Tony Tucker. Now, we were just that the same way that English people were with Joshua. We were the same way with Tyson. We be mentioning Tyson all the time before Lewis Lewis. Lewis. <laughs> like Lynn Seuss wasn't there when Tyson was in his prime. He was there. He wasn't getting fought. Why wasn't he? Ask Evander Holyfield why. Because they was going, we going to fight everybody else. We ain't messing with him. We don't have to. That's why. Same thing that Riddick Bo, Bo did by throwing the thing in the, the damn trash can instead of fighting him. It's, everybody was like that. It was how it was. But he was a bad dude that people wasn't giving the props he deserved. That's why Lynn Seuss and Deontay Water almost damn near identical. In terms of and in, in that, in terms of what I'm talking about, they are not getting the respect that they deserved while they're fighting. 
afterwards a little bit, but I still hear Tyson's name before Lennox Lewis. And it irks me. It's no, I was always going to beat you. Early, late, whenever. You know what I mean? And you don't be, you know, if somebody didn't fight me when they could have, then we do that. Same thing with Joshua and Deontay Wilder. You could have fought me. We doc It's documented that you didn't. So I'm better than you. Just as simple as that. <laughs> right? Until you get the balls and want to fight me. Until then, I'm better than you. We had negotiations. You were the problem. Same thing with Riddick Bowe and Lennox Lewis. And Tyson, too. Right, you could fought me earlier. You gave, gave the money to Ronda the Hollyfield because you thought it was going to uh, going to be easier. Gave me four million to not do nothing. What the what's up? So I'm just saying, Lennox Lewis when he went, went to f fight Rockman, that first fight, he had just came off beating that guy. Like everybody that had a name in it at the time had a hiccup against Oliver McCall, but he had beat up some dudes way before Oliver McCall. I'm talking about the Tony Tuckers with one loss, uh, you know. Butler with no losses, a couple of O's, and then, and then he went in there, and then he beat the David Tours of the world, the, whoever, who I don't even know, everybody, Ray Mercers, anybody who was boxing back then, Lindsay would beat him. <laughs> anybody. And at the time that he got Rockman, he had just, you know, he was he wasn't he, he wasn't really probably expecting that, <laughs> right? He wasn't expecting that because that, that was before he fought Tyson, I think it was, and um. You know, he's thinking Tyson. You know, he's thinking Tyson, you know, because I, I ain't done nothing. I ain't got nothing else to do in boxing except Tyson. He was on his way out. That was like one of his last four fight, fifth to the last fight, probably. His first Rockman fight. You know what I mean? So it was like, it was only Tyson left. I just did. Hollyfield beat him twice. You know, it's over. Hollyfield beat Tyson. I, I just beat Hollyfield after beating Tyson. You know what I'm saying? So we beat everybody. So Rockman just, you know, came in there and you going to play with me? Boom. Right hand them. That's what could happen in the heavyweight division. Right? The difference is, you know, and, and, and so I'm thinking too, when he before that Rockman fight, not only was he, you know, he was taking it easy, but that Ocean's Eleven movie was going down. He was in there in the Ocean Eleven movie with Vladimir Klitschko, you know, and see for fighters, the movies, you know, that's that, that's some nervous energy. You know, them you know, that's some nervous energy. They don't know how to act. So they nervous and excited. So he's over there doing the movie and stuff and just taking it easy, coming late to fight Rockman, wherever I forget where the fight was, but I know he was thinking somewhere in Africa. I'm not sure about that. But, he, you know, he got there late. You know, I'm doing Ocean's Eleven, man. I ain't got time for that. Rockman ain't going to be nothing, man. I just beat Hollyfield twice. I ain't got no time for this Rockman. Boom. Heavyweight division. <laughs> you know, awakening. <laughs> Literally. Okay? Messing around with Rockman. The second time he took Rockman out of there. Now, you know, Deontay Wilder and Ortiz, the difference is we know exactly how dangerous Ortiz is, but some will say he's not, right? But the, the, I just can't, you know, take that seriously because anyone who's talking about boxing the scene does not have fought him or I tried, right? So it's just ridiculous, right? But, uh, you know, Deontay Wilder even talking about, shoot, if they Creed 3, you know what I'm saying? Get me for Creed 3, all right? Think about them movies and stuff. Mess around. <laughs> and, you know, boom. You know, so the bottom line, there's some parallels there. Now, Deontay Wilder, man, he's fighting to be undisputed. That's why, bottom line, fighters that say that, I'm already down with them. And with all of these sanctioning bodies, and when we get down to them lower weights, you know, it'd be like 112.5 pounds, then there's another weight at 115, then there's another weight at 118, there's another one at 122. There's another one at 126. There's another one at 130. You know, five pounds, that's a steak. Man, that's a damn steak. You know what I'm saying? And then, in every one of them weight divisions, it's four champions. About to be six. And then with the interims and all that, about, about ten of them, man. It's, I told you, you go in the auditorium and you say, it's champ, stand up, man. Everybody going to stand up except you. You know, it's just way too many champions down there. You know what I'm saying? So, at the end of the day, you know, when somebody says fight for undisputed in the world that we are in right now, the boxing world, then you're rolling with them. You know, Alexander Uzzik, Terrence Crawford, legends, period, regardless of what else happens. And the way the, because everybody's allergic to undisputed. Soon as you say undisputed, people freak out. You're talking about Deontay Wilder. Didn't he say he wanted, he wants to be undisputed, right? 
Remember when he said, well, I'll take the winner of Ruiz and Joshua, and then I'll fight undisputed? Do you remember what Tyson Fury did? Do you guys remember? Tyson Fury was like, hey, man, I'm a suit for my fight in uh, on, on, on February 22nd. When, when he says undisputed, I'm a suit. Same dude who's talking about suing to stop an undisputed fight, same dude is out there in the WWE, right? Going to fight an MMA fighter, talking all, just, just all kind of other stuff. You know what I'm saying? Just nothing about fighting or boxing. That's why I, whatever, when I talk about Tyson Fury, because I know exactly, he, whatever, he's like, i got other things that I would want to do, and if I can get paid ten, uh, two million when I'm off from real fighting because my eye is messed up, so I can run around here and get a million or two or whatever it is. They're saying these astronomical numbers, but that's not true. But even if it's a million to go out there and act a fool, that's what he does easy in his sleep. He's supposed to go pick up that check. And plus, I can't fight no way, so I might as well be out here acting a fool. That's what I do. So I understand that. But the bottom line is let him do that. You ain't trying to be undisputed. But he was a little bit of hypocritical. When Wilder was trying to, he wasn't trying to fight, do something else. MMA and cross fights and all that. No, he was trying to be undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, and we were about to get in the way of that for litigation. We we're going to try to sue for that, right? And then now we're talking about undisputed heavyweight division. Look, the WBA, the, the WBO, hey, we're going to put another mandatory there. We're going to strip him. You know, Ruiz, he just gets tired. We're going to strip him. IBF, hey, Kubek Pula, you're going to have to fight him right away or she's going to strip you. Instead of like, wait, can I go fight an undisputed fight? Uh uh. Allergic to it. Demetrius Andre and Canelo in the middleweight division. Allergic to it. Don't even want to hear about it. Right? Don't even want to hear about it. I ain't going to talk about Loma could fight Devin, Devin Haney. The winner of that fight, or Comey and, and uh, uh, Lopez winner. We can have undisputed right there. Every time you get close, something will happen. Because boxing is allergic to undisputed. That's the thing. You know what I'm saying? So... Let me make sure this is clear, right? Deontay Wilder could possibly uh, fight a trilogy with Louis the Real King Kong Ortiz if he loses, so that's something good. And as far as I'm concerned, I don't, you know, like I've told you before, I watch fighters do awesome things and I take it in. You know, Deontay Wilder can lose three fights in a row. As far as I'm concerned, I've watched what he's done up until now and what he's tried to do, who he's tried to fight, and whatever. So it doesn't matter. But if, you know, I want to see him get an opportunity to be undisputed. But regardless of what happens, I'm rolling with Deontay because I've seen, this is what I would ask him for. As a matter of fact, I don't think he's done nothing, really. You know, just like, hey, would you want to be undisputed? I've tried. Do you knocking people out? I'm doing it. Are you going to fight this guy or that guy? Yes, if they would just show up. So I don't have anything else to ask the man. You know, me personally, you know, as a grown man. Now, I know people, you know, acting like they want something else for him. But they, you know, honestly, in your heart, you know, damn, this is a straight up dude trying to do whatever. Now, with Louis the Real King Kong Ortiz, that's another dude right there. That basically, I don't want to see flatlined by Wilder. Because I would like Ortiz to be good enough to after that fight to where, okay, Wilder beat me. Somebody else do it. Right? And maybe if he get beat by Wilder, somebody might try to step to him. Right? So you can see the distance there. I don't see nobody else beating I don't know who it would be. It's going to beat Ortiz. Right? So it's going to be a good fight between Wilder and Ortiz. If Wilder does, it doesn't really matter, but if Wilder takes him out again, guys, I don't know what you got to say about that, man, but I'm pretty sure you'll figure out something. Dome Sports Talk, worldwide. And I'm about to hear y'all.